Hello again. This is a continuation of the previous video in which we went through the creation of two trees for the two parts of this Calciatore Verragamo market strategy example. If you have not seen those videos, or that one video, uh, where I go over the story of the problem and build the initial decision trees, please do so because otherwise this one is not going to make any sense. Uh, and in this video, I want to show you uh, how to do sensitivity analysis with decision trees. As in, if some of the data that I am feeding the tree, I, you know, maybe I have some belief that that data is good, but what if, you know, I am off by a little bit and the number that I'm inputting is a little lower, a little higher? Would that dramatically change my course of action? And if so, I want to understand how. So this is the idea of sensitivity analysis, and I'm going to show you how to do that in two circumstances. And that's the point of this video. So here we are. In the first part of that example, we were simply picking a strategy, aggressive, basic, or conservative, or cautious. I don't recall what they refer to that as. I think it's uh, cautious. C is cautious. And... Um, if there is no additional test performed, like there is in part B of the problem, the decision was, well, choose go basic because that's the one that gives you the highest payoff. And that was considering the there was a 45% chance of a strong market reaction to this product. So the question that comes to mind is, well, what if this 45% really is wrong, right? And uh, maybe it's a little lower, maybe it's a little higher. Would I still do strategy B or would I switch to something else, right? I want to gain more confidence about my choice of strategy. So here's what I would like to do. I would like to modify this number 0.45 and let's say make it range from 10% chance of a strong market to 90% chance of a strong market in, in, in increments of 10%. And I want to see what the tree will tell me. Will it continue to say B? Will it switch to A? Will it switch to C? And at what point will it do that, right? So, and I can do that by, well, I could record these numbers, right? At 45%, the EMV for A is 9.1 million. The EMV, the expected monetary value for B is 1285. And the EMV for C is 10.5 million. So I'd like to record how will these numbers change, these three numbers, as I change this value 0.45 between 0.1 and 0.9 in increments of 0.1 or 10%. And for that, I'm going to use this feature that Excel has called a data table. It basically allows you to take an existing model or a series of calculations that you already have in your sheet, in this case, you can think of a tree as a model, a series of calculations, and you can change one of the inputs or more of this calculation and record one or more of the outputs into a table. And th so this is how it works. We can uh, list the values that we want to change for the input in either a column or a row. I chose here a column. You'll see how to do row later. And we choose what is the number we want to modify, which is this one. And for all of this to work, and this is a common mistake the students make, is for all of this to work, the tree has to be pointing to this cell B8, wherever it needs the strong probability. As in, look here. In, I have B8 there. I don't have the constant number 0 0.45. Because if I do that, when I tell Excel, modify this value, the tree will not reflect the modification if it has the 0.45 hard-coded in this location. That's why you have to make sure, go through your tree, and wherever the 0.45 is, it is actually pointing to this location. And the second thing is, all numbers that depend on this 0.45 have to be dependent on this B8, meaning this guy here 
should not be a constant 0.55 either because if this 0.45 changes, this number has to change as well. So either you make this 1 minus that, which is what we have, or you could make this guy here 0.2 C8 as long as C8 is 1 minus this one, which in our case it is, because again, I want this to change when that one changes, so that as I modify this, everything that depends on it cascadingly gets modified, and then the tree will give you the correct answer. So just double check that ahead of time. Great. Now let's move on to the, you know, the data table itself. Here's the idea. You take this area where you uh, have the values you want to replace the 0.45 with. And in, he, in these cells here is where I want to know, as I change the 0.45 to these values, what will the EMV of choice A become? What will that 9.1 become? And I want to save that here. Likewise, save the EMV of B, etc. For Excel to know what the output that you want to save in here is, you choose the cell right above that and say, the formula I want you to use to fill in these cells is the formula located here. So I chose where the output cell is. Okay. And the formula that I want you to use to fill the cells below in here is this one here, the EMV of B. And the formula I want, this is the output that I want to save as you modify this value. Okay. Once you have that in place, now what you have to do is you select this entire table. Make sure you include, of course, the values you want to replace there. And that row that contained the formulas that are going to be used to save the outputs. Once this is all selected, you go to the data menu and there is an what if analysis um, choice here. If you click on that to open it, there is a data table choice. Click on that. Now, this is what's called a one-way data table because I am only modifying one input value, the strong. Now, it has two choices because I could have a two-way data table in which I modify two inputs, and we're going to be doing this next. But for now, we're going to do the one-way. And now comes a question, which of these do I need to use? And here's how you choose. If the numbers you want to use to replace the value of the input you chose are listed vertically like this in a column, you go to the column input cell field. If I had listed these guys horizontally like this, which I could, it's just a matter of layout choice, right? If I had listed them horizontally, I would go to the row input, okay? But I listed them vertically. Now, what is it asking me to put in here is asking me to do the following. What is the cell into which you want to replace these values? Well, I want to put them in here, right? Because that's the input I want to modify. So this is saying, take the numbers in this column and replace them one at a time in cell B8. And then, as you do that, these three outputs will change. And I want you, Excel, to save those values in these columns here, right? When you click OK, we'll get the, out, the result of that. And this is what it is. So what does it say? If the chance of strong had been 0.1, the EMV of A, meaning the number here, would have been negative 4.2. The chance of strong had been 0.1, the EMV of B would have been, right? So this basically did uh, some work that you could have done by hand, but it would have been really annoying to have to do that by hand and record these outputs. Now, um, an interesting way to look at these outputs is the following. Let me draw a graph of this. So let me select all these outputs. And let's see if I can make this 
work without making a mistake. I went to charts and there's a line chart and I'm just going to choose the line here. Okay. And cool. This is what I wanted you to see. So series is the name of the it's default name it's giving to the column. So series one is basically EMV of A, this is the first column, EMV of B, EMV of C, series one, two, three. I could go in the chart and change those, the text there, but let's not waste time doing that. I want to show you what this is telling you. And the horizontals here, it just defaulted to one through nine, but these are actually the point one, the point two, and so forth, right? The probability. So what this is saying is, Right now, our default right, was 0.45, and 0.45 is like here in the middle between 4 and 5, right? And, and who is the highest EMV? Is the red. Who is red? Red is B. Yeah, indeed, if strong is 0.45, B is the way to go. But now notice, as the 0.45 goes a little higher, B continues to be, do B, do B, do B, because that's the highest line, the highest EMV. But there's a point at which the B line gets overtaken by the blue line, which is series one, that's a strategy A. So between some value uh, below 40% and some value above 55%, strategy B is the best course of action. And from here down, right, uh, from 30 something down, you should always go with strategy C between these two values do strategy B and above this value do strategy A. So we might be wondering, can we calculate these precise, this breakpoint here so that I know exactly what to do? Yes, we can. And uh, an interesting way of doing that is to use solver. So why don't we do that now? Let me move this over a little bit and I'll come back to this graph later. What I really would like to do is this. How low could this number go so that the tree still tells me to do B? That's the minimum chance of strong for which B remains the good idea. And how high can this number go so that the tree still tells me to do B? That is the highest chance of strong for which B remains a good idea. And this basically will give me the range that I'm looking for, right? How confident I am about going with the B strategy. And uh, we could use solve for this in the following way. I can do the following. Solver. I would like to take this number here and make it as, let's say, as uh, high as possible or as low as possible, being with the low. And the variable, the number to change is the number itself. And there is one constraint actually. I want you to, I want the tree to say, uh, do B, right? And that is to say the cell here, I, cell I15, where the yellow boxes. So I15 will say 2. That is to say, I am still choosing the B strategy. So if I do that, and notice I'm gonna not I'm not gonna switch this to linear because the tree is not a linear model. So keep this non-linear. And Minimize that, and then let's solve this and see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it converged to about thirty-four uh, point. That's around thirty-four point eight percent. So I'm going to write this at thirty-four point eight percent. And now let's do the other way around. I want to go, what is the largest that that could be? Max here. Okay. And that converged to about 60%, right? 60%. So what can I say here? So I can say the following. Between 34 Point in sixty percent chance of strong market go with B, right? That's what this is telling. And basically, I found what those breakpoints are. 
this lowest point is 34, almost basically 35. Let's round it, 35% chance. And this top number is 60. So I think I now feel way more confident about going with strategy B because remember, my initial belief was what? 45, right? And now what I'm telling you is this. Even if you're wrong, as long as the chance of strong is anywhere between 35% and 60%, you should still go with the basic strategy. And that is probably a much nicer input that I would like to go with than just having the single 0.45 number because I may be a little you know, uncertain about that number. Now I have a range and I may uh, feel a little better with choosing B. Okay, that's the idea of the sensitivity analysis. And again, I think that looking at this graph is also more informative for us to have a better feel of how these strategies, uh, one takes over the other once as the market reaction probability changes. Great, so this was the one-way data table. Now let's do a one with in which we modify two inputs just so you see how that goes. And for that, I'm going to use the second larger tree, the second part of this strategy problem. If you remember, what we did here was uh, before we choose ABC, we could run a test. And the tree says you should do that. So we went with the test. The test cost half a million dollars. The test could end up being encouraging or discouraging, at which point I would choose. If it's encouraging, the tree says go with aggressive. If it's discouraging, go with you know, cautious. And there was also the choice of no test at all, right? Uh, in case doing the test wasn't really beneficial. Turns out that with the initial conditions of the problem, again, assuming this 45 and all of that, with these conditions, doing the test is the best course of action. But again, you can ask yourself the same question. What if some of my numbers were to go up or down by a little bit? Uh, would I change dramatically what I do? Yeah. And that allows you to be a little more certain of your actions under this, you know, uncertain environment. So let's change two inputs now. One of them will still be this chance of strong. Okay. And remember my first comment, make sure that your tree is all pointing to the data that you're going to modify so that the data table works properly. And let's also modify a second input. And I'm choosing here the cost of the test. So like in this case here, I had the chance of strong changing. I put it in this column, right? I do the same here. Chance of test, uh, chance of strong market in this column. And now in the row are the values I want to replace for my second input. And my second input will be the cost of the test here in B15, right? So if you want to change two inputs, this is how you have to lay out the values so in a column like this and then the one in a row right by it because the output is going to be saved in the middle, right? Like here we had the output saved here and these were the three different outputs we were monitoring. Great, so I have this layout here. I know which cells are the inputs I'm modifying. It's going to be the strong probability and the cost of test. Now, let's, uh, for example, what kind of, a, uh, what outputs are we looking at? Well, let's focus on the following. I want to know the following. As these things change, should I do the test yes or no, right? So I want to monitor this box. Is the box telling me do test or not do test, right? If the box says don't do test, I want to know that. And if the box tells me do test, let's say just for the sake of this example, I want to monitor what will happen if the test is encouraging. And if you wanted, you could do a second one of these tables for what would happen if the test is discouraging. But let's focus on the encouraging. So again, I want this middle part of the, the, of the table to tell me either that I didn't do the test or if I did it, what was a strategy to follow 
in case the test was encouraging. So I'm going to monitor the result of the second yellow box. Was it telling me to do aggressive, basic, or cautious? Now, just like we did here, that we placed in these strategic locations the output we want to track. Because we are now doing a two-way table, there is no space here for me to put the outputs to track in a column like this. So the place to put the output to track in this corner. In this corner, I'm going to type a formula that will be used to fill in the middle of the table. And the formula will be like this. If you recall for what we wanted as an output. I want to know first if you told me not to test. What does that mean in terms of the tree? It's if this box said 2 instead of 1, right? Because 1 says go up, do test. The 2 says go down, don't do test. So what is a cell in this box? It's a cell I52. So I'm going to do here, if I52 equals 2, I want you to write here in the middle of the table, I want you to write no test. Because then I will know, oh, the box was telling go down, don't even bother with the test because it's not going to be worth it. Otherwise, right, this is the else of the if. Otherwise, I know we went up. And then I want to know, under the encouraging outcome of the test, did you tell me to do A or B or C? So I could simply ask it to write here, write down for me the value of the cell Q15. What did the yellow box say? I could just go and do this if I wanted. In which case I would see in here the table the numbers 1, 2, or 3. But if I want to be a little more fancy and say I actually want you to write ABC instead of 1, 2, 3. I can use an Excel function called choose, which is to do, go, do the following. I'm going to look at Q15. If that is equal to 1, write A. If that is equal to 2, write B. If that is equal to 3, write C. Okay, this is just to be a little fancier. Instead of writing 1, 2, 3, I want to write A, B, C. This will be pretty. Okay, great. And now it's just saying A because that says 1 here, right? And the first box says do the test. Great. Now, to calculate, notice what is this going to do? There are how many values here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And here there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 66 combinations, 6 times 11. So when I run this data table, it's going to resolve the tree 66 times. Imagine doing that by hand, how annoying that would be. So data, what if analysis, data table. Now this is a two-way table. Recall how we did the other one. There are two inputs changing. Which input cell will receive the values that are listed in a row? Well, the values listed in a row are these guys. These guys, I want them to be the cost of the test, right? So the cell, the input cell that is supposed to receive these values is the cost of the test. And here is which of the inputs is the one that will receive the values that are listed in a column. Oh, the column is here and these are the numbers I want to replace in place of the strong market probability. So that's P8. That's how you decide what to put where. Look at the layout. Was it row? Was it column? Where are these guys going? These guys in the column are going in B8. So that's why column input is B8. These guys in a row are going in cell B15. That's why row input is B15. Okay. I don't really like the way this terminology is, but it's, I feel like it's counterintuitive, but that's what it means. Anyway, that's not up to us to change. If we click OK, it's going to solve the tree 66 times. And now we have a pretty table to look at. And uh, this is sometimes referred to as a strategy table. What is it saying? Well, if the chance of strong is zero and the test is free, do strategy C. 
But as the test starts to cost money, it's basically saying, don't even bother, don't do the test. Just go with your gut, right? And as the chance of strong market goes up, we switch out of this into, oh, at point three, I have now gone to B. At point four, I'm still doing B, but as the test gets very expensive, I actually give up the test. And at some point, I switch to A. And as the chance of strong gets super, super high, I don't even need to bother with the test anymore. But so wherever you find yourself, you can just place, go to that cell, place a cursor there and say, oh, this is what I should do. And of course, if you wanted, you could make this the, you know, add more uh, smaller increments to make this a little, these jumps a little less, you know, dramatic. I just did that so that the table wouldn't be too big uh, as an illustration, but you can make this, a, you know, as granular as you like. But this is what I wanted to show you in terms of a two-way data table and how you can build strategies that allow you to just stare at it. You can take this table to a meeting and then talk with people and say, what do you guys think we should go and do now? This is way more informative to come to a meeting with something like this because it allows people to wonder, oh, what if we're wrong with that number? What if this number is bigger? And this gives you a lot of information to have a nice conversation about it. Great, that's all I wanted to cover in terms of the one-way and two-way data tables. I hope this was helpful and thank you guys for watching as always. Hope to see you here again and bye-bye.